welcome to another episode of the Wellness Minute, where we aim to put your health in your hands. This is Dr. Rebecca Pilly, and today's episode, we're going to talk about a disease that affects about 300,000 children in the United States. It's juvenile arthritis. While there's no cure for this disease, early diagnosis and treatment can help prevent joint damage. Today we have Dr. Amina Keats, a local naturopathic doctor, here with us to talk about the naturopathic treatments for this disease. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Keats. Thank you for having me. You know, when I think about arthritis, what comes to mind are people who are getting older in their years. What is juvenile arthritis? So juvenile arthritis is a chronic condition and it affects children from infant age all the way through teenage years and it's actually the most commonly diagnosed type of arthritis in children. It's considered an autoimmune disease and it also has an inflammatory component and it's actually a, a, a large umbrella with six different subtypes underneath that larger juvenile arthritis category. Um, now, the, the subtypes are based on the, the presentation. So, for example, how many joints are involved? Is there skin involvement? Um, is there um, inflammation to different organs or parts of the body like the heart or the lungs or the eyes? And so taking that all into account is the way that the, the particular subtypes are diagnosed. Wow. Well, what causes juvenile arthritis? You know, another name for juvenile arthritis is juvenile idiopathic arth arthritis. Ar idiopathic meaning that the, the origin is unknown. So long story short, the cause of juvenile arthritis is unknown. There are some studies that suggest that it might be a genetic component, but that hasn't been uh, definitively determined. There may also be an environmental connection, so perhaps exposure to certain chemicals, mm. uh, but that hasn't been absolutely determined either. Wow. So um, are there any preventative measures that someone can take? You know, unfortunately there's not because we don't know what the cause is. So for, for that reason, you know, there, there's not really a, a clear way to, to prevent it. But the good news is that there are a lot of things that we can do to help to improve quality of life in these children. So how would you, as a naturopathic doctor, diagnose juvenile arthritis? So if, if I had a patient or a child that came in with, um, with, with those kind of symptoms in, in terms of the, the joint pain, et cetera, the first thing that I would do is take a very thorough history. Uh, the thing with juvenile arthritis is that it's a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that there's not a definitive test that you can take to say, boom, you have juvenile arthritis. So taking a very detailed history is important. Certain laboratory tests, looking at particular inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein or ESR or ANA, um, ordering imaging studies as well. Mm -hmm. um, from there, if I suspected that juvenile arthritis was a diagnosis, I would then refer that patient to see a specialist, uh, specifically a, a pediatric rheumatologist. Oh, okay. So um, what types of therapies might you recommend? So <clears throat> typically, uh, children who are diagnosed with uh, juvenile arthritis are already taking certain medications like um, NSAIDs or steroids. In addition to those things, I would recommend, well, first of all, I would focus on nutrition because when it comes to um, naturopathic care, nutrition is really the foundation. So really um, understanding what is the, the typical kind of dietary intake, what does that look like? The second thing that I would consider is uh, supplementation. So <clears throat> um, uh, natural anti-inflammatories I would consider. Another thing that I would consider is uh, perhaps calcium and vitamin D for, for bone support. Because what happens when children take steroids or anybody really over long periods, osteoporosis is a risk. Mm. So bone support is going to be es essential in these children. Um, some other things that I would consider would be basic lifestyle kind of factors like sleep hygiene or even um, regular exercise. Okay, so you, you talked about food as medicine. Yes. Are, um, what are the types of therapies that you might use to treat arthritis? So when it comes to nutrition, <clears throat> I would focus on an anti-inflammatory kind of diet. That's one thing to consider under that nutrition kind of umbrella. So focusing on foods that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids versus omega-6 fatty acids. So for example, wild caught fish, especially things like salmon or sardines or herring. 
and less of grain-fed beef, for mm. example. Um, more fruits, vegetables, raw nuts, lots of water, less uh, refined sugars. Generally, that's what that diet would look like. Another thing that I would uh, consider speaking with the family about is an elimination diet. So with an elimination diet, what you do is you remove common food allergens like cow's milk, mm. like wheat, eggs, um, soy, the nightshade family, especially in, uh, with this particular diagnosis. And then what you would do is gradually reintroduce each of these food categories back into the diet, and then you can determine if they cause any kind of um, increased pain or exacerbation of any of those symptoms. If they do, then you know for that child that this particular food should be eliminated. It sounds like it, it could take a while to figure out what's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely a process. Okay. And um, so you talked about the kind of diet. Uh, is there uh, an integrative approach to treating juvenile? arthritis? Sure. So as I mentioned, referral to a rheumatologist or especially a pediatric rheumatologist is going to be important in developing that professional kind of relationship. So <clears throat> making sure that anything natural that I'm doing is not going to be, be interfering with the conventional treatment that that child is receiving. So working closely with that provider. Um, another thing to consider is a massage therapist. And so there are studies showing that massage can help to reduce the joint stiffness and pain for these children. Um, another another um, practitioner con to consider or to, to pull into this team would be a physical therapist so that they can create specific exercise regimens for these children. Mm -hmm. So I also think that um, a young person experiencing that pain might be stressed. Yes, that's another, yes, that's another big component to that. So stress management is going to be very important as well. So whether that's through simple lifestyle things like um, restorative sleep. So sleep is important for so many functions in the body, um, immune regulation, emotional balance, um, exercise is important as well, not only for physical strength and helping to support the bones, but also for emotional wellness as well. Um, counseling may be something that that family would want to consider, but absolutely the, the mental, emotional aspect is very important. It sounds like you really want to look at the whole person. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. Well, I certainly learned a lot today. Do you have any final words for folks out there that um, are searching for a solution to pain their child's experiencing due to arthritis? Sure. So I would, I would uh, recommend, highly recommend that people who are out there that are interested in a, in a more integrative approach as opposed to just the conventional medicine reach out and find a, a licensed naturopathic doctor in the area so that they can add additional kind of therapies to their plan to improve the quality of life for that child. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today, Dr. Keats. And uh, there you have it, the naturopathic point of view on juvenile arthritis and some treatment options sufferers and their families can take into consideration. So thanks again for joining us today. And join us next month when we talk about breastfeeding. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dr. Rebecca Pilly. We'll see you next time.